Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So I think we're on episode 119, 120 now, I'm not entirely sure, completely lost count at this point. But yeah, we have got one system to do today, um, so yeah, we're going to get straight into that in one sec. But before we begin guys, just a massive thank you as always for watching the video, subscribing, um, supporting the channel, all that good stuff. It really, really means the world and yeah, it's just, it's just amazing um, and yeah, just... Massive thanks again. I mean, I, I, I know I say it a lot, but yeah, just a huge thanks um, to everyone for that. And also as well, guys, if you would like to send in your own systems for me to check out in these videos, make sure to either join my Discord server, link in the description, or you can let me know the name of it um, on the Steam Workshop in the comments. But I, I would much um, advise doing the um, Discord option. It's just a lot easier and more organized, and it's just easier for me to um, go through them all um, and all that stuff. So please keep that in mind um, when sending in systems, as they can get lost in the comments. So yeah, please keep that in mind. But yeah, with that all out of the way, like I said, we've got one system to do today. And we have got, yeah, one system from the user Noah um, in Discord. And, yeah, he said, um, can you just check out the system? Okay, yes, yeah, so, and this is called the Fragments system. So let's go ahead and get straight into this. So open, uh, then we go to Fragments. There we go. So it's this green one down here. Right, let's see what he has prepared for us here. So let's open this up. Okay, we've got a lot of reading. That's a very, very load of reading. Oh, it looks like it's got some color coordination, just from what I'm briefly looking at here. Okay, so here it is. So we have got 43 objects. Okay. Right, so, um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this. So, welcome to the Fragment System. This system was formed in the year... Welcome to the Fragment System. Oh, wait, um... Oh, no, it's just, it's just, um, it's just, like, the typo. Okay, so this system was created in the year 9 billion AD. We are now going to travel back in time, 9.5 billion years to 0 0.5 billion years, before the Fragment System was formed. A solar system with a central star called the Sun and eight planets orbiting was attacked by a small star called Nemesis. Okay, I'm liking, I'm liking the concept here. This sounds interesting. The two stars pulled each other together, and the end of the solar system could be seen from all around the galaxy okay but the explosion that destroyed the solar system also created four new stars and one new brown dwarf okay i'm liking the concept here this is cool i mean it may be a bit out there but this is this is really cool so as the supernova expanded the dust um clumped from the f of yeah clumped together to form knots that grew into asteroids that grew into planets okay um this was the birth of the fragment system okay this is really cool so, um, ever since the fragment system was created 9 billion years ago, a spore fungus has been travelling across the Milky Way to the system. After a peaceful 8.5 billion years of spinning around the galaxy, that is quite a long time, um, the spore fungus reached a fragment system. As um, of you seen it, the fragment system is under attack. I have colour-coded the planets by their trail colours. These are the colours. So, green is good, red is bad, yellow is unimportant, and then purple is the um, home world. Okay, so we've sort of seen something like this before, actually. It was, I think it was a fungus as well, way, way, way back before episode 100 where someone did color coordinate the objects um with like if they're good or bad and stuff i think that's a cool way to do things um i have to say but yeah let's get into it so the star itself or the um central star so here's fragment a so it's pretty large in size bigger than the sun in mass um if we look at the blah, 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 uh in masses or size of the sun so we've got 3.41 radius so pretty pretty big um it's obviously a blue star um as well there but yeah there we go right so the first of the planet so this is bud over here Right, so here we go. It's also got, and this is a red one, so keep that in mind. This is a um, bad, and it's also got a yellow moon, which is unimportant. But yeah, here it is. So it's a gas giant. Can we go on to realistic mode? Okay, it looks like it's um, working, actually. So sometimes we could get lighting glitches and stuff in here. But yeah, here we go. So this planet was once home to a small, friendly bacteria floating around in its warm atmosphere. But that was a long time ago. Bud was now as a hostile planet. This planet was the first planet that the spore fungus infected. Okay, the friendly bacteria was instantly killed and the planet became a new home of the spore fungus. And it probably spread it more around as well if it's a new home. Um, after a while of suffering, while the fungus floated around in the clouds, the planet started to fall towards a star and became tightly locked to the atmosphere. Um, was almost heated to a thousand degrees. Okay, so there we go. So pretty hot gas giant, I'm guessing now. So, so minus 272. That's just because of the simulation in the newer version of the game. And then we've also got the moons over here. So this is Bud 1. This is quite a cool looking object. So it's um, black and red right there. So yeah, there we go. Rightio. So there we go. Right, so the next object is Candle. This is a green object. So this object is good. So no, no um, infection or anything here. Right, so candle. Let's see what we have got. It's also got a moon. Oh, wow, okay, this looks pretty awesome. Oh, wow. I'm liking the way that's looking. Let's go on um, directional light. There we go. That's looking good. I really like the way that looks. Very unique. So this um, I love a candle is a habitable planet. However, it wasn't always like this. When um, the life that formed in the system developed, candle was a barren world of raging storms that destroyed everything in sight. However, when the life forms arrived, armed with colonizers, it became an amazing world of stunning scenery. That'd be pretty cool. 
Uh, nine billion years ago, candles started out as a moon of um, tulip, the, the next planet out, as the creation period of fragments galore turned into the late bombardment period. Okay, yeah, if anyone knows what that is, that's um, a lot of um, a lot of our own solar system's history was in the late bombardment period. Um, candle was kicked out of Tulip's moon system by another moon called PN4. It wandered through the system for about 100,000 years before finding a stable orbit in the Hattle zone of Fragment A. It was there that it gained enough mass to become a planet. Okay, so it built up after being tossed out. Okay, that's pretty cool. So here it is. But yeah, I really like the way this guy looks. I think the colours the colors go well, like the green surface. It's got the blue clouds. We can see there's a bit of um, water in the top there. It's probably just been a bit of a bug. Being in the newest version is very, very buggy um, at the moment. And then we've also got some moons. So this has actually got its own moons after being a moon itself. And then Candle 2. So this is an object which is... um. So there's a, this is a spore-infested world right next to the apparent planet there. So that's um, pretty dangerous. Don't want to be on there because I reckon some of those spores could probably leak. If they can travel across the whole galaxy, they could probably easily jump from moon to planet there. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So there we go. Right, so where we are next? So next we've got this one. So this is Tulip. So this is the one that this um, or that previous planet came from on the home world here. Okay. Oh no, Candle 2. Okay, we didn't go to Candle 2. Um, or we didn't, we didn't talk about it. So when the civilians of the home world came to Candle... They also terraformed Canal 2. However, when the fungus arrived, they attacked Canal 2, removing all the water. Soon after, all the life on Canal 2 fled and moved to Candle itself. Okay. Um, crops and plants died, leaving the only brown shriveled up. Okay, so yeah, Canal 2 is also out here. And then this is what it was left as. So yeah, pretty barren. We see a brown atmosphere, brown clouds on it. So yeah, there we go. So it's a grim reminder of what the moon used to be. I really like, I really like this. This is cool. So right, anyways, back onto this now. So Tulip. So this is a um, puffy planet. Um, that is Tulip on the verge of becoming a brand dwarf. Here's the backstory. When the explosion that created the fragment system happened, it created four stars. But fragment C was once a star until it um, scraped the side of fragment B during the late Bobalant period. Fragment B and fragment C were in similar orbits around the main star until one day the planets around fragment B saw a new star looming behind fragment B. This was fragment C. Then one day, Fragment C hit Fragment B and scraped aside. It lost some mass and became a brand dwarf. Okay, so, but when this happened, a chunk of rock broke off C and became tulips. So this is a remains of a star then. Okay, and it's also picked up some gas and stuff. It's a pretty cool looking object, I have to say. Look at it here. So, there it is. It's black and white with a, um orange. I'm guessing the orange area is to sort of show um it being tidy locked. Or this side is facing the star for about half the year. So, I like that. That's cool. So, yeah, there we go there. It's kind of like what Uranus, the regular Uranus has. It has that blue, like different shade of blue at the front of it like that. So that's quite cool. Right, on to the moons. Okay, this one's a very nice looking moon, I have to say. So here it is. Quite a nice blue one here. It's just, it's not mentioned here, but yeah, really cool. Oh, there's an Earth in here. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward to getting on that. We're not going to skip to that yet. But that, okay, that's that Earth. Okay, interesting. So Earth survived um, into this new era of system. So this is, remember, this was all built off the remains of our solar system or the sun and nemesis nemesis's collision so okay that's cool right so here's pn4 so this is the object that had the um trouble with the planet we were just at so yeah pn4 was the one that had a little confrontation with candle there and that was the one that tossed it out um so yeah there we go right now we're on to home world so this moon is the home world of life forms in the fragments galore okay so this is um this is the center of it all right here so very nice looking object with the green clouds as well that looks really cool so here it is here. So it's 20, 20, nice, 29 degrees. The stats, 74 and 21. So yeah, pretty decent stats there. Very, very nice looking object though. Very, very cool. So, um, okay, however, it wasn't for Tulip, the homeworld might not exist. This is because when Tulip broke off Fragment C, another small rock broke off. This created homeworld. After millions of years, small asteroids brought water to the atmosphere, or the homeworld, which created a livable atmosphere made of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, cool. I like that. So there's homeworld. Okay. Right, and then we've got a bunch more of the uh, tulips. So here they all are. So pretty small little objects, as we can see here. Right, so tulip one to four. Right, cool. So now zooming out. So the next one is the what's left of Earth. Okay, so before we go ahead and look at it. Okay, so a forgotten world, that is Earth. One of the two lucky survivors of the solar system. Here's the backstory. When Nemesis flew into the solar system nine billion years ago, Earth was a habitable world with complex life. But when Nemesis passed Earth, it slingshotted away from the solar system and into deep space. Okay, so when the two stars collided, Earth was far enough away from the sun to survive. Ah, um, it, that must be a pretty far distance then. It then started orbiting fragment A when the fragment system was formed. Okay. Right, so here is Earth, or what's left of it. So as we can see here, its atmosphere is just 
completely greyed out now. It's very, very barren looking. It's very, very hot here as well, so it's just completely ruined. At this point, Earth would be very old, because remember, if we're already around 4.6 billion years into the universe, and then this is another 9 billion on from that, yeah, we're pretty we're pretty far into the future here, so this is a very, very old Earth, an absolutely ancient Earth um, at this point here, so from a bygone era almost. So yeah, there it is there, so there's Earth. Yeah, really, really like that. We can see it's lost mass, so it has received damage over the years. We can see it's mass and radius. It's not what it used to be. Earth has been very, very hurt there. So there we go. Right, that is Earth. Right, so let's go ahead and close that. Okay, so the next one is Planet Neptunian Guy. Okay. So it did say uh, two of... The, so Earth was one of two lucky survivors. So is Neptunian Guy what's left of Neptune, maybe? So wh wh where is... Where actually is it? So we've got Fragment A. Okay, so... Fragment C, I'm guessing... Okay, no, fragment, we'll go to Fragment B, actually. So, Earth was the last object there. Okay, so Fragment B. Okay, so there's Neptunian guy there. Okay, so Fragment B, as we can see, brown or um, red dwarf, sorry, by the looks of it. So, go to Sun. So, or maybe, maybe you could maybe, maybe it's an orange... Uh, red orange. Probably more of a red, actually, with a low mass. But, yeah, there we go. Right, and then the planet Neptunian guy. Okay, so what what's over here? Okay, so yeah, it doesn't look like Neptune, so it's something a little different. So planet Neptunian guy. So this planet is in trouble. As soon as the solar system was created, planet Neptunian guy was infected by the fungus that started off in the fragment system. For the whole of the 9 billion years of existence, planet Neptunian guy has been the home world to a second life form in the fragment system. A long time ago, planet Neptunian guy was an enormous gas giant with countless moons and a beautiful ring system. So, so is this what's left of Neptune, I'm guessing? Um, a long time ago, Planet Neptune guy was an enormous gas giant. How, how big is it now? It was bigger than what Neptune is. Okay, so it can't be Neptune then, because if it's... Yeah. If it's bigger than what Neptune was already, and it used to be enormous, that means it, in theory, was bigger than what it is now. So this this can't have been Neptune then. Okay, so a long time ago, there was an enormous gas giant with moons and ring system. And when Frequency passed through the system, it was on a direct collision course with Planet Neptune guy. The planet got torn up and turned into a tiny gas dwarf. Okay, so yeah, this was this definitely wasn't Neptune. The moons collided to form Frequency, and the rings floated off into space. Only one moon remained. Okay, so there it is. So where is that moon? Okay, all the way here. So this is Aurapax, so one of those random generated names. So yeah, and actually speaking of random generated names, we've got good old Nuskaski, which is the next one. That is the most common random generated name, I believe. So yeah, a lot of people have um, had one of those in their systems. So yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's all of the objects around Fragment B. So we still haven't discovered the other surviving object from the solar system. We have Earth, but what was the other one? That's what I want to find out. Right, so oh, oh, and there's that object there as well. Okay, but yeah, first Fragment C. Okay, so we've got... Okay, so we've got some more objects. Oh, so here's Fragment C itself. So it's a lime green gas giant. Looks quite similar to one of my old ones, actually, um, right there. So here it is. So, yeah, there we go. So really nice there, actually. So looking good. So that's Fragment C. So it's actually just a gas giant. It's not a star or anything like that, like he did mention. So then uh, here are the other objects. Actually, that one almost looked like it had a face on it. From that sort of view, it almost looks like two eyes and then a mouth. Is that just me? That looks like a face or something um, right there. But, yeah, there we go. So there's that one. Fragment um, C2. We'll just um, open up the menu so we can see them a little easier. C3. Okay, C3 looks cool. We're getting a closer look at that. So what we got going on here? So it's a, um, a very, very dark brown world. Maybe a bit of red in there as well. With green aqua sort of greenish turquoise clouds. That's, that's quite a cool looking object, I have to say. Very nice there. And then it has one moon as well down here. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm really liking this system. This is a really cool system. So yeah, we go. And then um, Nuskaski down here. Okay, so what's... um? So this is the planet that science can't explain. When scientists observed from the home world, it was uh, 43 years ago, it appeared as a fuzzy black and white image. Everyone thought it was just another boring old planet until 40 years later, it was observed again, found a red and pink surface with a lime green atmosphere. That is a very exotic looking colour, isn't it? Look at that. So let's just get a close look before we continue with the reading. But yeah, there it is there. So very, very exotic colours there. It's also got one of those like glitches on it, so you just ignore that line there. So there we go. Okay, so um, the um, scientists were shocked. I can't even color code the trail because no one knows anything about this planet. Okay, oh, I like that. So it's just got a, like a default color. Um, so however, a year ago, the scientists sent a probe. Okay, and then that was the... Oh, okay, so that's the probe. So RDH44, okay. So... There we go, and then it has one moon called Ornate as well, another common sort of name when you get on the random generated ones. So where is that probe then? So if we zoom out. Okay, so there it is there, so RDH44, so that's the probe that's on its way there. Okay, cool, right, so now we're heading to the next, so we're heading to the next area here. So, so we're at Fragment C, so Fragment D is next. Right, so what's down here? Okay, so here's, here's Fragment D, right, so another red dwarf um, by the looks of it there. 
ITO, and then onto the um, object here. So, right. Oh, this one looks pretty good, actually. I'm liking the colours on this. So, KJP1712. Although this planet is one of the most beautiful in the system, it is probably the youngest. Here's the backstory. Five billion years ago, at the end of the late bombardment period, Fragment D was orbiting the main star with no planets orbiting it. But then one day, Fragment D got too close to Fragment E, and then they scraped the side. Okay, um, a piece of rock flew off Fragment E and later became this one. Okay, one dwarf planet called AH1203 already orbited D, but was caught by this and became a moon. All right, cool. So, yeah, there we go there. But, yeah, so that's a nice-looking object. I'm liking the yellow clouds with, like, the forest sort of green colour underneath. Very, very nice-looking indeed. It's stats as well. So, we've got 86, but a very, very low life likelihood. I wonder why that is. Let's check its um, atmosphere stats. Maybe maybe that's why. It's a very, very low surface pressure. That's probably to explain there. But, yeah, there we go. And then here is the object, which was a dwarf planet, but then became a um, moon. So, there we go. Right, there we go. Right, so those are those ones. Okay, no, that was AH1203. Okay, so a barren moon that is H was never actually formed around the main planet. So I actually missed this one. So here's the backstory. When the universe was only 1 billion years old, a large dwarf planet got ejected from the system, consisting of 16 planets and a quasi-star. Okay, wow. All right, so it travelled across the galaxy for about 10 billion years. So, so this is very old then. So it makes Earth look very young, actually, in the system. So this is very, very old. Before arriving at the fragment system, Orton Fragment D, it stayed there for a couple of million years before being captured. And then that's how it formed. All right, so there we go. Right, and that is all of the reading done. Okay, so there we go. But we still haven't found that other solar system planet because he said Earth was one of two survivors. What was the other survivor? That's what I want to find out. But anyways, we've got Fragment E here. Right, so Fragment E. There's none of there's nothing written about these objects, so I wonder what these could be. Oh, Hi G. Ah. So I'm guessing this is the second survivor of the solar system. We've had Earth, and then this one somehow survived, but it's not explained. Oh, I want to know how it survived. So yeah. Right, so Fragment E. So there it is there, so another red dwarf. And then on it's to its planets. So this one is very, very hot. Probably the hottest object in here. So there we go. So DH0905. So very, very hot there. Makes Venus and Mercury look very, very um, cold. Then the other objects over here. This one's a very, very dark um, blue. And Oh, no, is that... Is that is that blue? No, that's, that's just blue. Okay, I thought it was ice or something. But yeah, there we go there. And then it's also got some minor objects, as we can see there. All right, cool. M1 and M2. So there's some more moons. Right. Then we've got Neep over here. Another good looking. So it seems like um, our curator Noah likes his um, aqua turquoisey green atmospheres. But this is a Mercury texture by the looks of it. Mercury or the moon. Probably, I think it's the moon actually. But yeah, very, very um, customized moon or Mercury as we can see here. So yeah, there we go there. So yeah, that's, that's a cool looking one, I say. Very nice indeed. So default. Oh, I broke it, but it is a moon. Okay, I have to find that out. Oh, we completely broken it. Oh, no, we've broken it. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and reopen that. But yeah, we broke it, but that was... Okay, so that is a moon. Okay, cool. That's really, really customized. I like that. So yeah, there we go. So let's go all the way back over to Fragment E. But yeah, just going back to that Earth bit, actually. Yeah, so it said um, a forgotten world that is one of two lucky survivors. So I'm guessing, yeah, Earth, and then it was Hygieia. Out here, this is one of the asteroid belt objects. So this has somehow survived, but it doesn't say how it survived. No, I want to know how it survived. Is it? Is it like, there's no second page to this or anything, is there? No. Ah, oh, I want to know how it survived. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, we looked at this one. Yep. And we have this one. So yeah, we're at Neep, aren't we? So yeah, there we go. So this one's at 23 degrees. Let's check its stats. We'll go head back to uh, directional light. Oh, directional? No. Have I completely broken it? Studio. Flash. Okay, oh, flashlight. Okay, there we go. Ah, so the other lighting modes are broken for some reason. That's very strange, but flashlight works. So yeah, there we go. So that is neat, but yeah, really, I really like the way that looks. That looks really cool. It's always nice to see a customized moon or Mercury of all the craters. Um, but yeah, there we go. And it's also got some moons of its own here. So yeah, there we go. That's another moon. Look at that. It's a brown one. So there we go. And then another one over here as well. So yeah, there we go. Nice color scheme on that one too. So there we go. Right, so there's all of those. Right, then we had so we looked at this one. So then the last object is Hygieia out here, the other survivor of the solar system. So, yeah, there we go. So that's just chilling out here. Very, very small, just chilling. So, yeah, there we go. But that does it for the fragment system. And I have to say, I really like the concept. Really, really cool idea. I, I, I like the reading it. I thought the reading was very interesting. And, yeah, I, it's actually left me wanting to know more. I want to know how, I want to know how Hygieia survived. Because Earth's, Earth's quite a cool... Uh, I, like, I like that. I think, I think the concept of the... Uh, 
very old ancient earth i like that that's cool so yeah there we go but again a massive thank you to our um creator of this system noah from discord really really i really really like that i think that was really really cool um so yeah massive thank you to them for sending this in and yeah no if you're making any more systems or a sequel or something i am i'd love to look at it um at some point as well so yeah really really cool stuff um indeed and yeah guys let me know what you think of this system down below as i gotta say this, is, this has been a really cool one so yeah here's all the objects though so here we are let's go through them more quick so i think um i think honestly i think this this one here that's definitely one of the top ones to me i think also um obviously this one as well the nuskuski there uh, and then definitely candle and then kgp i think they're my top picks for this system out of all these guys and then homeworld as well is quite similar but yeah you can see there's a trend there's a lot of like cyan blue turquoisey green atmospheres in here so yeah really really nice um collection of objects as well and yeah really really cool backstory really really enjoyed it um but yeah that is everything so like i said guys let me know what you think down below um in the comments and also if you want to send in your own systems make sure to follow the instructions i said at the start of the video so it's either the discord or the comments so yeah, make sure to do that if you want to do that um and yeah that is everything guys let's see if we can go for 40 likes for this really really cool system today guys a massive thank you for watching today's video as well make sure to subscribe helps on the journey to 13,000 subscribers and yeah that is everything guys so make sure you all have a great day and i'll see you in the next video goodbye